Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'm here again one more night again with our, our movement in the month of February. And we are talking here tonight about the supernatural light. And this light I'm talking about tonight here is not everybody could, uh, could will be formatted in that light. Not everybody could have, the, have that type of uh, choice to be in that light. You know? The supernatural light. The only person can create that light is Jesus Christ. Not even the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will only illuminate that light when you get Jesus right. You know? So you have to get, you, have to get, you can have the Holy Spirit and don't have Jesus right. <laughs> you must get Jesus right for the Holy Spirit to illuminate that light. The light is very important. I thank God this morning for Alex, uh, George, talk about the dark light. You ever hear about that dark light? A dark light, a light that, a, a light that comes in deception. Uh, it's a deceptive light. A dark light, a light that you know. You think you're seeing, but you ain't seeing. You think you have it, you ain't have it. Think you are, you ain't. You believe you, you, you are somebody, there's nobody. That's a dark light. You know? Good word, Alex. And the more uh, Rena Pierce come up, come coming on. Then after, now I'll be great. We'll be on again on Thursday, back on Friday. The light of God in an individual is the light of their life. Once, once you, the, the God kind of light can only be seen in one life, and your life has to reflect it. You know. The light you're talking about here is not, not a light now that where it, it have bulb in it. The light is an attitude. It's a lifestyle. It's your intelligence. You know, it's also God going to impute in him his ability in you. That is the life of God. When, when you have God give him ability, despite you going through a, a rough place, a rough time, you've got to have the God give him ability in you. That is the life of God in an individual which have the life. Right. See, God is our life. God in our lives bring light to our situation. Whenever God is in your life, <coughs> there is a light that comes only when your situation is overwhelmed by problem and attacks. Then God steps in that light and give you the solutions. You know, uh, solutions is what you need. Many of us go through some things here, and we, 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 we have to get solutions. And if you don't have the solutions, you will have a situation. And sometimes, with the right connection, I like to talk this morning, connection. If you like connect right, if you connect right, you will have your situation attended, and you will find your solutions. Ah, boy. See, and in our life is salvation. All this light of God light, you've got to have salvation. I don't care who you are. You will never have that super access to supernatural light if you don't have salvation. Now, salvation is a gift from God. You can't buy it. You have to deserve it. You have to earn it by, by knowing how to keep it when you get it. I have salvation over the past 39 years, you know. Salvation is a gift. You know, nobody could give it to you. You have to, you have to earn that. You have to earn salvation. And salvation don't come through men. It, you know, it, come, it doesn't come through men. It comes through God. You know, when you have salvation, you have a life of God in you. See, having salvation is the introduction to the lives of God and in God. When you have salvation, salvation introduces the life of God and then God. See, there are many folks, you know, life, they have life of God, but they don't have life in God. Let me say again. There are many religious people right now believe that God and God and this and that God. But you see, the, the teaching doesn't have Christ. The teaching don't have Christ. They don't make Christ the center of a life. So that means you have, you, have, you have life of God. 
when you have life in God, Christ is the center focus. And that is what I beat folks on. I make Christ my center focus. So I have life in God because Christ is in God. And when you, have, when you have Christ right, you have life in God and not of God. Ah, that's a deep stuff here, boy. That's, that's really stuff. Many folks have life in God. And some folks have life of God. They're religious. They drink, they smoke, and they pray. <laughs> See, many people want the life of God without salvation. It cannot work. It cannot work only if God approves it. God had to approve, you know, he had to pr approve that his light in you without salvation. Nobody is. You could fake it. You know, God had to approve that. Boy, this is some deep stuff here. There are folks right now walking around this earth and they don't have salvation but they have the life, the, the light of God. You know why? Because God approved it. You can't tell God, don't bless her. Don't bless him. You can't tell God, don't bless the Hindu man who sold all the money to the Hindu Muslim man. You can't tell God who to bless. Why? Well, that's heavy stuff. Because, because his gift, God's gift of salvation is without repentance. God's gift is without repentance. It says in verse Romans 11, 29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That means it's up to God to give you the light without salvation. I can't do that. I believe that. The gift of God is without salvation. Romans 11, 11 to 29. It's up to God. And many men right now want to represent God because they, they live in a life of God and not in God. God can do what he wants. God can save a drunk. You can see a drunk man heaven if God wants. Because I think God gift is without repentance. See? It's up to God. God knows the, God knows the goodness to do. The, the good things. You know? Because God don't forget your labor of love. Your labor of love can give you the desire to impress God and get the light. The labor of love. That's what it pays to do because love is the fulfillment of all commandments. All commandments being fulfilled with love. There's no Sabbath in love. <laughs> See, Jesus was tempted. When Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist, he went up in the hill to be tempted. Jesus. We're talking here now about the supernatural light. He was tempted. And he was tempted a couple of times. And the last time he was tempted, in Matthew 4, verse 9. You know? The devil says, he said unto Christ, Matthew 4, 4, 4 verse 9. And he said unto him, all these things, all these things, Will I give to you, Jesus, if thou will fall down and worship me? That is what Lucifer, Satan, the devil was talking to Christ. After all these things, say, all these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Verse 10, Jesus said unto the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee from hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Hey, Amen. Jesus was powerful. Jesus the Christ. That was the Christ in Jesus. He says here, you know, Satan, move from me. Move, move. There comes a time you must know to tell Satan, move. Move from me. Move. Get from behind me. For it is written. If you don't know what is written, you can't speak it. That's why you have to understand the light of God needs the word of God. If you don't have no word, you can't have no light. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, not a man. 
a woke man not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. So Jesus now says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Hey, I love that man, boy. And him only shall thou serve. And verse 11, something happened in verse 11 that stand out. Then the devil leave him. <laughs> there comes a time we know we must know what to tell the devil, and he will run. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. That was enough light in Jesus' word to make the devil run from him. Then the devil leave him, and behold, what is this? What is here? What what is here? And behold, what was this here? And behold, angels came and ministered unto Jesus Christ. Angels. Angels come. When the angels saw how Jesus manipulated the devil, we come, we had to be in a place where our teaching and our word and our worship was be able to manipulate them. Not no prophet. The devil leave him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto Jesus Christ. Angels came. Hey, 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 hey now. Hey, listen now. When angels can visit you, huh, anytime you hear angels come to me, that show you are connected to the God of the light. Because no angel coming to you unless there's a connection with the God of the light. Angels came and ministered to him. Have you experienced voice in your head? You know, when I crashed, when I had my accident and I crashed my car, I had voice in my head. I hear a voice saying, hey, I hear, I hear a voice talking to me, saying, watch Carl, look at this Carl, you're going to know Carl, and voice talking. Angels, when I crashed my car, angels came and ministered unto me. And I, I didn't have no salvation. <laughs> but angels came. When the angels come to you, to anybody, that shows you are connected to the God of the light. Or the Hebrew says, Hebrew says, says sometimes we entertain angels unaware. I had a man from Ohio here, uh, uh, two days, uh, 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 Apostle uh, Jack from Ohio. I don't, know, I don't know, know the man, but God said, call the man. God said, call the man, hook up with the man. You know? And when, when God gave me an assignment to hook up, that means I have angels ministering to me. Even though I might not agree with the man, I might not prove the man. God said, call Stanley Jack and minister to him. And you know, I, I thought I brought the man to, to meet a minister. But God told me, no, Carl, you minister to him. And when I was ministering to the man, the man started to minister back to me. Hey, that's angels. I enjoyed that. We started with iron and we started, we started to correspond and I started to feel the man. Angels come and visit you. Many angels are ministering to God's children because this pandemic has damaged the human race. Not just you alone. It damaged politicians. It damaged scientists. It damaged preachers. It damaged saints. It damaged the human race. It damaged those in poverty. It damaged, it did more, it's the most damage has ever been done since the human race exists after Noah. This pandemic, it damaged the human race. And right now we are suffering the consequences. And we need angels to come. We need, right now, the whole world need angels to come and minister to us. That's the only how this pandemic will bow. Verse 12. We're talking here now about the manifestation and supernatural. Verse 12 says, Now when Jesus 
heard that John the Baptist was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Verse 13. And he leave Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, Kapu which is upon the seacoast, in the border of Zebulun and Nephthalim. Nephthalim. He came and, 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 and he came and he bore there, bore there, he came and he settled himself there. Jesus came and he, he, he leave Nazareth and he, he heard his cousin John in prison going and lost his head. He leave Nazareth and he came to Capernaum, which is upon the coast, the sea coast, on the border of Zebulun and Nephthalim. Verse 14. Why did Jesus, why did Jesus leave Nazareth and come to Capernaum? Why? 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 Verse 14. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. That is why he leave. He lived there. He was going on assignment to bring fulfillment. There are times you've got to leave your comfort zone and go in the power of the light because things need to be fulfilled. I like to fulfill things. I like to be in people's life. I like to bring joy to people. I like to bring harmony. I like folks uh, to get grace. I like folks to get saved. See them get baptized. See them get joyful. Get back the husband. Get back the wife. Because why? I had to leave my comfort way of thinking so somebody can be receiving their fulfillment. See, there are many revelations that the world needs about Jesus. It's being manifest in this time of the pandemic. Right now, there are many revelations. There are men of God right now bringing some clean revelation in this pandemic. All the old guys dying out. Pack up. All them people who play game with the God. They're packing up. And there's a new crop coming in. And bringing many revelations that the world needs about Christ. That is why Christ leave Nazareth. Can you leave your comfort zone? Can you leave your job? Leave your education? Can you leave your husband? Leave your wife to cause fulfillment? Fulfillment need revelation. And sometimes for fulfillment to manifest, we need to have angels ministering to us. And when angels come, Satan have to run. Verse 15 says, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephilim by the river sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the Gentiles. So these, this land, Jesus goes by a land now. Why were all these cities mentioned in God's word? Why God put all these cities? Why all these cities in God's word? There are so much country right now in Trinidad, in the, around the world right now. They are now coming to a place of clarity and understand why they exist in. Look at London. London opened up the whole country right now. No more vaccine, no more masks, no more distancing, no more this, no more passport. Because why? Angels start to minister to the prime minister. <laughs> They may find fault, but that prime minister of London, angels, check him out. God went and talked to that prime minister. There are some prime minister, God ain't reached there yet, but angels come to minister. London opened up. I have friends call me. They say, Carl, I can go back to Africa now. No vaccine. I can fly and go. Can you come? I say, no, I come in yet because I go. Angel ain't telling me to fly yet. Angels, they say, they say, Carl, don't fly yet. Why were all these cities mentioned in God's word? Because fulfillment was needed 
and about to take place. <laughs> Fulfillment. Was, was, sometimes, sometimes a girl leaves school, family vex. A boy leaves school, family vex. You leave, leave, leave your job. But sometimes you leave your job, leave your school, so fulfillment can take place. This pandemic was allowed by God so fulfillment can be manifest around the whole world. Not just your church, not just your home, not your country. Fulfillment is being manifest around the world. And I thank God I'm a part of fulfillment. I said, God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. God, whatever you're doing in this season, let me be a part of some fulfillment, some young boy life, some young girl life, some business life. Let me be a part of somebody fulfillment. We're talking here manifestation. There is no manifestation without fulfillment. You want your manifestation? Well, God has to fulfill things in your life. If things not fulfill in life, sometimes God will get you sick. Just for a miracle. He gets you broke so you can depend on him. Get you frustrated so you can cry out. Because God needs things to be fulfilled. And, and when it's fulfilled, manifestation will take place. Verse 16 says, look at verse 16 says, look why Jesus, look why Jesus put this in the Bible. Why God put it in? 16 says, the people which sat in darkness... They saw great light. They saw great light. They didn't just see a light, you know. They saw great light. Amen, God. There's a difference between light and great light. I thank God I'm going after great light. I want some great light. I want some great light this morning. I want some great light. The people which sat in darkness, they saw. They saw. They didn't hear the so great light. So that means that light become transparent and it was manifested. The people which sat in darkness saw great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow on the shadow of death, light spring up. Man, there, there was the, the, we talking here, but those who was about to die, the shadow of death. Death was, there are many folks right now who have the virus and they are around the shadow. Right now there are some machine hook up. It is called the shadow of death. And what they need right now is great light. The shadow of death. You're seeing death, but it can't die. Because why? Great light is coming so it can manifest you. Oh my God, Lord. The people sat in darkness. They saw great light. And to them, which are in the region, and shadow of death, light spring up. Hey, hey now. Darkness, when you sit in darkness, nothing happening that concern God. <laughs> That's how you know in darkness. Anybody right now who doing something, that don't concern God, you are in darkness. These people here in Zebulon and Bethlehem, Jordan, Galilee, the Gentiles, nothing was happening that concerned God. The worst place to be in, the worst house to be in, the worst family being is a family and a house where nothing happening that concerned God. When it happened right now, darkness. You will sit down in darkness and say it's light. Great light, great light, great light. He says, the people which are in darkness, so great light, great light. They are light that are great. They are light and great light. I don't want no more light. I want to be in the great light. Ah, oh my, when Jesus walked on the scene, when he came on the scene, they saw great light. Great light. They didn't just see light. The light sprang up. And those who were about to die, man, they were in the shadow of death. Whenever Jesus appeared, once he appeared, of his being or, or being lifted up. Once you could, once you could, 
exalt Christ or lift up. Once you lift up Christ right, you see, we need to stop lifting up scientists and politicians and doctors, minister of health and hospitals. We need to stop lifting up natural things and start to lift up things that are spiritual. Whenever Jesus is being lifted up, great light will shine. And you don't preach a sermon or a message and you want great light and that message don't have nothing but God and Christ. He says here, the people sat in darkness, they saw great light. To them, we said in the reading and shadow of death. Light spring up. Oh my. So we see darkness, great light, and light spring up. Light spring up. In, in these last closing days, light of God is springing up tremendously. I don't know if you are part of it. But I have some young people right now, they need light and they say no, they just can't dead. They can't get sick. They can't go mad. They can't get lazy. They have no money problem. They broke and live like millionaires. I have some young folks that God is about to use this nation. They have no money and they're happy. And they, know, they can't understand the common Zoom and the preach the word and the shine go white. They hold on to the great light. And once you, you do that here, you'll find you will spring up in a tremendous way. In these last and closing days, God is about to spring up. Hey, are you one of them that God has chosen to shine? I thank God. A hey, shine, Mama, shine. A hey, shine, Papa, shine. A hey, shine, Sister, shine. A hey, shine, Brother, shine. God wants to shine. He says, Yeah, great light. And when it's shrubby, you will shine. Tremendous light is coming. A hey, Mama, shine, girl. A hey, Papa, shine, boy. A hey, Sister, shine. A hey, girl, a hey, Brother, shine. Shine, 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 because great light has come. What make the light great or spring up? Verse 17 says, For that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is here. At hand mean is here now, not next week, not next month. The God's kingdom is here now. He said, if you repent and you come inside, I will give salvation. Because salvation comes through repentance. And when God gives salvation, it's a gift. When we preach it right, great light will spring up. When you preach it right, repentance will, will, will take place. You've got to preach it right. You've got to say it right. Don't go on those semantics. Preach it right. He says, and he began to preach. And great light, great light, and they repent. The shadow of that of death. Life came among those who are about to die. Right now, you may be in some hospital on some machine. And the doctor says you had the virus and you can't breathe no more. And you can't do the same. You lost a job and you can't give him the money. You have no rent. They're not kick you out. Man, great light is coming. And you have to understand it must preach right. It must talk right. When you talk right, great light. Sure, the gospel produces light to those who sit in darkness. This pandemic cure to get the cure for this pandemic is not politics but the gospel. The gospel is the only cure can eradicate this pandemic, but it must preach right, it must preach right, it must live right. It must talk right, because great light is about to spring up. Hey, call me here. Come again right now, tomorrow night again. Great light. Look out tomorrow. Rain up here. God bless you.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'm here again one more night again with our, our movement in the month of February. And we are talking here tonight about the supernatural light. And this light I'm talking about tonight here is not everybody could, uh, could will be formatted in that light. Not everybody could have, the, have that type of uh, choice to be in that light. You know? This supernatural light. The only person can create that light is Jesus Christ. Not even the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will only illuminate that light when you get Jesus right. You know? So you have to get, you, have to get, you can have the Holy Spirit and don't have Jesus right. <laughs> you must get Jesus right for the Holy Spirit to illuminate that light. The light... It's very important. I thank God this morning for Alex, uh, George, talk about the dark light. You ever hear about that dark light? A dark light, a light that, a, a light that comes in deception. Uh, it's a deceptive light. A dark light, a light that you know. You think you're seeing, but you ain't seeing. You think you have it, you ain't have it. Think you are, you ain't. You believe you, you, you are somebody, there's nobody. That's a dark light. You know? Good word, Alex, and the more uh, rain appears, come up, come coming on, then after, now be Greg will be on again on Thursday, back on Friday. The light of God in an individual is the light of their life. Once, once you, the, the God kind of light can only be seen in one life. And your life, how do we reflect it? You know? The light you're talking about here is not, not a light now that where it, it have bulb in it. The light is an attitude. It's a lifestyle. It's your intelligence. You know, it's also God going to impute in him his ability in you. That is the life of God. When, when you have God-given ability, despite you're going through a, a rough place, a rough time, you've got to have the God-given ability in you. That is the life of God in an individual which have the life. Right. 